Hi. So in my previous session, I did a little fitness test using a long, slow ramp, five watts per minute for 25 minutes, just to get a handle on my fitness uh, and see how I'm going. And then I followed that up with a little training session where I did three laps of the Volcano Circuit on Zwift. Uh, and I aimed to try and go a little bit faster each time and, and managed it. So I think it was 651, 643, 634, something like that. So I actually managed to produce a slightly faster lap each time. And um, because that total ride lasted around about 20 minutes, it also kind of doubled up as a surrogate FTP test where I'm trying to look at my maximum power output for 20 minutes. Now, of course, because it was structured a little bit more easily than an FTP test in terms of, I didn't just go all out for 20 minutes. I had one lap a bit easier, one lap probably about for FTP, and then the last lap where I was trying to lift it above that. Um, I probably didn't get exactly to FTP. And um, based on my initial uh, ramp incremental test, that five watt per minute test, where I hit nearly 250 watts, um, I thought I might be able to sustain about 215 from how I felt going through that test. When I analyzed the numbers afterwards, I found that I actually averaged 205 watts for that last effort. But um, overall, it gives me a feel for where I am. Now, a key thing then is how we can use that, that, how I can use that data. Well, the first thing is it's a nice benchmark for me to compare my fitness against in the future. So I can repeat one or both of those activities and particularly the ramp incremental test. I'll incorporate that into my training on a semi-frequent basis whenever I'm curious, either because I'm feeling a bit tired or because I think I've moved on. I can do all or part of that test just to see how I match up. And of course, I don't even need to finish the test. I can pick off values earlier on in the ramp or if I've improved, I could ride to the same length of time and then um, stop there, knowing I've got more in the tank than the last time I did it. So it's a useful, they're both kind of useful benchmarks um, for looking at changes going forward. The other thing, of course, that they do is they help me identify the kind of training intensities that I might want to hit. Now, how do they do that? Well, this is where science loses its uh, perfection in terms of translating theory into practice, but a really obvious way is if I want to do a hard 20 minute session, then I know roughly what kind of power output I can dial up. But a really easy way to check that out now is to, for me to do a 20 watt effort, sorry, keep doing that, a 20 minute effort today. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm warming up gently now while I'm talking to you. And then in a few minutes, I'll start a steady effort based on what I think I might be able to do. So we know that I can do 205 watts for 20 minutes based on the previous ride. I think I can go a bit better than that. So, but conservatively, 210 or 215. So using Zwift, I can set my ergometer to hold a constant power output for that period of time, which is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna pick, I'll be ambitious, 215 watts. I'm gonna see if I can ride 20 minutes at that. So. Just taking control of the erg now. The 215 watts is all set up. And I'll join you again in about 19 minutes or so. Let's see how I do. Wish me luck. So I've just gone through the halfway mark, 10 minutes down. As you can hear, it's hard work and it was even harder. Straight from the get go, I realized I'd bitten off more than I could chew with 215 watts. So after five, I dropped it to 210. And that's what I've been riding at now. Still, this isn't about a suffer fest. I'm not a race and training. So I'm gonna lower it by another five watts in order to bring it home in the second half. I'll be back. Hopefully, if I make it in the last five minutes, last minute. Okay, I'm into my final minute now. I'm feeling much better than I was at halfway. Dropping to 205 watts really helped. I'm now at 152. In the previous session, I got 174, but that was with a different pulse meter. So 
I don't entirely trust that. And then for other reasons that I'm too out of breath to talk about now, but could do later, I expect to see a fairly sharp drop in my max heart rate as I resume training hard like this again anyway. So I definitely did this the hard way, starting too hard at 2.15, dropping to 2.10 in the middle at 10 minutes is about right. And then because it's training, not uh, a race, dropping it down to 2.05 for the last 10 minutes. So that's me finish my 20 minute effort, just removing the resistance, pedal more easily. Uh, and sorry, oh, that's good. Get my breath back now. And I average about 208 watts for that if I did 215 for five, 210 for five, and then 205 for 10. Works at about 28, 29 watts for 20 minutes. Again, I'll check the absolute numbers later, looking for my maximum 20 minute power. But that actually says my training session at the end of the previous video was remarkably accurate in giving me a relatively fun and certainly what felt like much less challenging session than the one I've just done to work out what my 20 minute power output is. Now, as I said, FTP notion is your one hour power, not your 20 minute power. And the crude rule of thumb for getting from 20 minutes to one hour is to take 95% of that. But I'm actually going on GCN in a couple of days time from when this video is recorded to talk with Simon Richardson about some recent research on, on this. And we'll discuss how that 95% is really just an estimation. So the only way to verify that is to ride for an hour at that kind of power output or close to it to see whether that looks feasible. I'm promising you I'm gonna do that, but it kind of makes sense uh, at some point. And these first couple of efforts have obviously been much shorter than that, so it won't do me any harm to go for a longer effort. Right now, I've been riding for 30 minutes with my 10 minute warm up and a 20 minute effort. And I'd say that's a session not quite done. So what I'm gonna do is go back and ride at that same power output again, but in much, much shorter blocks, just say a couple of minutes, and then take a minute rest, do another couple of minutes, another minute rest, and so on. And in that way, accumulate another 10 minutes or so at the power output that was my maximum for 20. But what that means is by the end of this session, I'll have ridden at my maximum 20 minute power for 30 minutes. And by having done that, I can be reasonably confident that I've pushed my fitness along in the right direction a little bit because I haven't just expressed my maximum capability by riding my best for 20 minutes, but I've actually done my 20 minute best for a total of 30 minutes in that session. And I raise this because it's kind of fundamental to how I tend to think about training. It's kind of like, if that's the intensity you've been training at, what could you keep? And then how can you devise different ways of stretching your training to nudge that so you actually accumulate even more time at that than we'd expect from, from your theoretical maximum by maybe using, say, interval training or that kind of thing. Anyway, I'll talk about that more in a subsequent vlog. Thanks for joining me and uh, please do join me again.